Here to present Sean with the award is another former coach and Malloy protege, John Haberman. John? See how long I can go before I knock that over. Um, are we on? Okay. Yep. We're on. Okay. Good evening. It is my pleasure tonight to introduce Sean Springs on his induction to the Montgomery County Sports Hall of Fame. I hope to give you some insights into his character and accomplishments. I met Sean in 1991. His father, Ron Springs of Ohio State and All Pro Dallas. Cowboy fame, was moving into the area and he was looking for a school with a solid academic and football tradition. It came down to either DeMatha or Springbrook. After visiting DeMatha, Sean came to Springbrook and Coach Malloy gave him a tour and it was settled. Springbrook had the one thing that DeMatha didn't, girls. <laughs> With his, with his smile, charisma, and athleticism, it was no surprise that he became very popular. Academically, Sean's classes included trigonometry, physics, and Latin. After school, when he wasn't practicing, he was responsible for taking care of his younger sisters. On the field as a running back and defensive back, he earned local and all state honors. Sean went to Ohio State graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Sociology. At Ohio State, as a member of the football team, he was a two-time ac academic All-Big Ten athlete and was named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in 1996. Plus, that year they won the Rose Bowl. At Ohio State, Sean served as president of the Minority of One, a program offering support, scholarships, and mentoring to minority students. In 97, Sean entered the NFL and was drafted by the Seattle Seahawks, uh, the third pick of the first round. He remains the highest cornerback ever drafted in the NFL. <clears throat> Sean spent seven years in Seattle and playing under Mike Holgram and Dennis Erickson, where he was selected by the, by, uh, to the all-rookie team and the uh, Pro Bowl. During his time in Seattle, Sean was the president and founder of the Springs for Life Foundation, a nonprofit supporting at youth. Uh, youth. The foundation teamed up with the Junior Achievement, Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater King County, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and the Verizon Reads Literacy Campaign. For his community work, the Seahawks chose him as an NFL Walter Payton Man of the Year. <clears throat> It was also during his Seattle years that he and high school teammate Omar Evans nominated their former teacher and uh, academic advisor, Joyce Amatucci, for the NFL Teacher of the Year. Mrs. A, as she was called by everyone, won the award in 2000. He signed with the Washington Redskins as a free agent in 2004, spending five years with the team. In his time playing for the Redskins and legendary coach Joe Gibbs, he became the only person, only player in NFL history to lead his team statistically with sacks and interceptions in the same year. While with the Redskins, Sean was an active board member at Junior Achievement Second Genesis, and the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. For numerous years, he also hosted the Sean Spring Football Camp, mentoring young men 
like current NFL players Trace McSorley and Dwayne Haskins. Many of the athletes he coached went on to get scholarships and played collegiately. For his community work, the Redskins selected him as an NFL Walter Payton Man of the Year. In And in 2009, he was selected by Washingtonian Magazine as a Washingtonian of the Year, based on his com commitment to community service. <clears throat> After spending a year playing for Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots, he finished his football career in 2010. Following his retirement from the NFL, Sean has been on the NF or the Hall of Fame ballot since his first year of eligibility. After football, a near fatal event gave Sean a new way to channel his energy. He and his family were involved in a very serious automobile accident. It was while caring for his family that he noticed his son was uninjured in his car seat. That car seat sparked an idea that led to the creation of Winpact, a technology and applied science company whose goal is to improve impact protection in sports, the military, and automobile industries. Sean, who suffered several concussions during his playing days, is the founder and CEO of Winpact, and he is on a mission to build the most advanced impact protection company in the world. He uses his passion for technology and entrepreneurship to drive the company forward. Through the development of Crash Cloud technology, he has helped make the game safer for the next generation of players. It is now my great pleasure to introduce a young man that I'm proud to have coached, Sean Springs. I normally they say they say they say the best for last. In my case, it's the most talkative for last, right? Uh, Councilman, County Exec, thank you, Councilman. I tried my Springbrook jersey on yesterday. I almost passed out. <laughs> I was 175 pounds in high school. That won't work. Um, it, it is an honor and privilege to be here tonight. Um, I had a flashback um, seeing Dominique, who kicked it tonight off. She. Uh, was such an amazing, elegant speaker. Uh, I tell Dominique this story every time I see her 20 years ago. Uh, I don't know if it's 20 years. We just left high school 10 years ago. But, <laughs> but uh, Dominique uh, in high school was a female athlete of the year and I was a male athlete of the year. And my only request was, please don't let me go behind her because she's so good of a speaker. And I was just like, oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> you were so good tonight, Dominique. Uh, you know, and, and um, and uh, I am honored to be here speaking tonight because um, Montgomery County means so much to me and obviously uh, Coach Malloy who uh, was a, a big inspiration to me and so many others and you think about all the Olympic athletes, all the great people here in Montgomery County, it is a very special county and place and, and being the only football, the first football player selected, it, mean, it means a lot. And Coach Malloy, uh, I found out something tonight that you, you guys had these strategy meetings in your basement, but I'm going to tell the people the truth tonight. That's my goal to tell the truth. The truth is, Coach Malloy, he had one strategy. Give the best player the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he, had me he had me speak. He had a big game against Gilman probably about uh, six, seven years ago. And he had, um, it was, the Gilman had these 
great athletes. They had Cyrus Jones, and he had some good players, but the, the star player on the team was a guy named Stephon Diggs. And I said, Coach Malloy, what you going to do tonight? He said, I'm just going to find a way to get Stephon the ball. <laughs> I said, he's an 87 belly. He said, he's a receiver, but I'm going to give him the ball. But, um, um, and that was a great story, and he always tells these stories. And when I see Coach Malloy, he always got a great story. Uh, to tell about myself, and he was like, you're like tonight, he was like, you remember the Rich Montgomery game, I gave you the ball 35 times this year. He was like, it was so cold, you were gray. And I want to tell him like, no, it was so cold, and I'm black, I was ashy, Coach Malloy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just ashy that night, man, I wasn't was great. Um, Coach Haberman and Coach Malloy, as you know, not only players, but so many coaches, he's, he's influenced, and, um, I'm just proud to be one of those young men that he, uh, had the success that I had. And it, it all stems from Montgomery County. And we talked about the accolades and things came from my football career and being drafted to the NFL. But I think um, tonight that was so important that I invited a lot of my friends and teammates here tonight because <clears throat> For me, Montgomery County is so, so much more in the sports. It's about the relationships that I developed over the years. Um, I, Ike Williams, Omar Evans, who are like my little brothers, and Eric Allen and uh, Danny Roman and some of the guys I played with, and Ike and Omar particularly, they were like, they were two classes younger than me, but they were my brothers, and they pushed me, because I knew if I got out of the game, they was going to score some touchdowns, so I had to hurry up and make some plays. But the thing I'm most excited about, and I think this is what um, is so unique about Montgomery County, we are friends today, and we have uh, influence on each other's kids. You know, we, we are, I mean, Omar is training my kids and talking to them now. They're in college and they're playing. And Ike has kids and his son, Devontae, is playing in college. But we are sharing stories and lessons to our kids from high school and different things. And I think that's so important that, you know, that um, we know that it goes way beyond sports. It's more of a family atmosphere. It's one of those things that, you know, you just, you, when you see these people you remember from high school and now they're influencing your family in the same way Coach Malloy, some of the lessons I, I, I learned from Coach Malloy and Coach Haberman. And Coach Haberman, great job tonight because Coach Haberman is not a man of many words. <laughs> And, and, and the one lesson I, I learned from Coach Habe is like, you don't have to be a man of many words, just be a man of your actions. And that was always Coach Habe, because you would ask him question, Habe, did I do okay with this play? And he would look at you and be like, you all right, <laughs> you know? But it was always about the action. And uh, I'm so thankful, and I'm gonna do my part, you know, to give back to Montgomery County and see how we can make this a special night for the, the next, uh, the next group of athletes who come through because um, it means a lot um, to be able to stand in front of you guys because I never thought a young man out of Springbrook who just wanted to work hard and just be hanging out with his friends playing basketball at Stonegate Park and Martin Luther King Park uh, that I would have the success and be able to influence the community like I have. Um, thank you for everything and thank you for the award and um, um, thanks you for all my friends and people who are here. Oh, Miss A, you know I can't go without saying Miss A. <laughs> Miss A, I guess you want Teacher of the Year. I can't forget Miss A and other people who are here supporting us. But the reason why uh, it was so important about Miss Joyce Amatucci because so often it goes unnoticed about the, the importance of academics in the school. And you talk about, and I can tell you one story, and this is an example of Miss A. And I told Miss A, I said, Miss A, I already got a scholarship. I'm the man. I'm going to Ohio State. I don't need to do this paper. I already got grades. Miss A's like, I'm going to tell the coach, if you don't do this paper, you're not playing tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she held me accountable. And she wasn't even my teacher. Miss A, you're a Spanish teacher. This is English class. <laughs> That's an English paper. Now you're going to do your work. And, and she held so many young men, along with Coach Malloy and the coaching staff that we have, she held, she's, she held so many young men uh, accountable, and that's what our county is about. Not only is it about great athletes, it's about great people, about great academics, it's about being a community, it's about being a family. Councilmen, thank you for supporting uh, Montgomery County. The Board of Directors, Julian Norman, thank you for nominating me. I know it was hard being a Michigan man, supporting the Buckeye. <laughs> And Julian, at this point, it's not even a robbery. We beat y'all so bad in the last 15 years. 
I'll, I'll let you go, but no, but Trish and Julian and all the board of directors, Joe, who I had the privilege to work with at, at Comcast, all the people, I, I am uh, thrilled to be a part of it. I will do everything I can in my power to make this a, a, a great event, and thank you. Great stuff. And Dave, you're the man. Right, well, you're the man. Oh, I got, Charles Prince. I got, I got one more thing to say. <laughs> they put Seattle highlights because we didn't know how well the Redskins were going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to ask Sean a question because we heard, I mean, it's probably the true answer. The reason you picked Springbrook is girls. That's yeah. what we got. That's why. But what else about Springbrook attracted you? Well, that is true. Uh, the truth <laughs> is, when I went to the school store to meet Mr. Malloy, he was working in the school store, and he had some pretty girls there. <laughs> At 17 years old, it was pretty uh, <laughs> impressionable. But I think the thing for me, when you think about Springbrook, you know, Springbrook seems to be the school in the county where, uh, as you talked about the wrestling team, how all the different nationality, Springbrook is one of those schools that. You know, you got every um, race and ethnicity group that's represented at this school, but we all are Springbrook. We all yeah. Springbrook blue that was we all we 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 that blue and that blue and white, and we believe that we're the best school in the county. And I love that pride. I love that family atmosphere, and and that's what that's what the county is about. And, and go blue that Makes you feel good about Montgomery County, huh? Well, can I? Would you mind coming up, Bob, real quick? Bob, can you mind coming up, say? I, I, just indulge me for a moment because again, this is a special night. I think we yeah. should realize the significance. So let's get the two of these up here. The answer to success here. Now, Sean, you know a thing or two about talking. We just yep. heard that. So I'm going to give the microphone to you. Okay. And would you, something you've always wanted to ask your coach or, or, or say to your coach, you've got the moment now, you've got the microphone. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a tough question. I, and this is a question that I'm quite sure a lot of people want to know. Yeah, 300 college athletes and non pros. Who's the best football? <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> you know, you can I learned a long time ago from the master, uh, Coach Morgan Wooten. He would never tell you. He would never tell you that Adrian Dantley was, but he would never tell you. <laughs> so, yeah, there was a, there was a, we had a lot of us, nine of them got to the pros, and, and they were all great, and I would never pick one over the other. Like, you couldn't say who's your favorite child, you just can't do that. But uh, uh, I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to check Stephon Diggs too much. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm standing next, I'm standing next to one no, of the great Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think we're equal time. Is anything you want to ask Sean or tell Sean that this is your moment? It's everyone's night, oh, and we met the two of you together. Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> think. Did you tell him the Dwayne Haskins story? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you want to hear a funny story. Uh, I was sitting in my office of five years ago in Good Council High School, and uh, Sean walks in, unannounced, no phone call, nothing. And he's got this lanky kid there with him and his mother and father and sister and he said this is Dwayne Haskins here and he's going to be a pro player you need to get I want him to go to your school good counsel so I looked at the film and he was a great player no question about it and uh, uh, you know but I had a I had a, a starting quarterback coming back and, uh, <laughs> and I just couldn't the father wanted to you know he's starting now tomorrow he you know there's no competition he's your quarterback couldn't do that. I really couldn't do it. So, so Sean, you know, took him over to Bullis, and, and I don't blame him. And <laughs> years, years later, my oldest son, who was one of my coaches, said, you know, you dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have got Dwayne Hassel, we'd have won two more championships. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> Thank you.